Hey, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so our themes for this month, this is the last day of New Year's because it's the 31st. <laughs> and this month is waking up to the possible, exploring new ideas and theories, and open at the top. Now I may cover some of this, but of course, what came into my head was a story about a snake. Go figure. You know, a snake. <laughs> And I thought, it's a story that happened to me. It has to do with the fears. I used to have this, I guess it would be ungodly, a horrific fear of snakes. And, and I don't know where it came from because I lived in Edmonton, Canada, where it's really cold. And yes, we have snakes in a different area than where I grew up, but they were never around me. So I imagine it was from the Bible stories about the snake. It was vilified. It was put down, made really horrible, and also uh, things I saw on TV. I, I just, I, I, I never saw a snake until I was probably in my 40s. And so where did this fear come from? It was a really, I mean, usually they say we're born with two fears. The fear of falling and, lar and loud sounds. Those are two fears that we are actually born with. So what happened is I was... It's about six years ago. I mean, I have held a snake. I have, you know, since then, and I've gotten a little more familiar with snakes. And this last time that I was had an encounter with a snake was when Stephen and I decided to go for up Baser Road on the motorcycle, probably in the early spring or late fall, because I really can't remember. But it was still kind of cool, but and it could threaten with rain. And I was on the back of the motorcycle, and it was a beautiful day, and I was in, not thinking about very many things, and across the screen of my mind, I hear, I know I'm going to see a snake. And I, it caught my attention, of course, and I thought, wow, and it said, but here's the thing, I know I'm going to see a snake, I know I'm going to see a snake, and when I see you, I want you to know I mean you no harm. And I know you mean me no harm. So then we continued up the mountain, and we get off the bike, and then we hike in. It's a good hike, about an hour hike, where we go to the top of Willow Creek. It's not a lot of people go up there. There's like moonscapes. It's beautiful pools. We have our lunch. And we're walking. And I forget about this whole thing. And uh, we're walking back, and then Stevens usually walks a lot faster. He's got longer legs, and we're nearly at the end of our walk, and I'm a little bit behind. And it was, you know, I just take my time. I look at things. I wander. I amble. And I think, oh, I didn't see the snake. And just at that moment, I look down, and there's a snake. And it's at the side of the path. It's down a little ways. And I think, is it dead? Because it's so still. You know, snakes are really good at being still. They don't move unless you startle them. And I see it there. And it's a coral and cream and blue-colored snake. It's probably that long. And it's at the side of the path. And it's absolutely still. And I think, oh, there's the snake. And I get really low, and I crouch right down, and I get this close to it, and I think, is it dead? Is it alive? What's going on here? And it raises its little head, and it's got a round mouth and black eyes, and it looks at me. Now, I don't know if you know about what they used to do in Hollywood years ago when they wanted to make something uh, soft and the light diffused they'd use Vaseline on the lenses. Well, it almost felt like that's what was happening. There was sort of this quick connection between me and the snake. And it was like this diffuse light that came up. And we just looked at each other. And I, I felt a heart connection with the snake. Now, if you think about what the Dalai Lama says, you don't have to accept it, of course, but he says, we've all been everything. We've all been everything once. A cat, a dog, a snake. We've been each other. We've been different people. We've all been everything. And in that moment, I felt the idea of snake in lots of the Native American books is transmutation, shedding. 
And I looked at the snake and I felt one with it and I had no fear whatsoever but love. And so I think something got reframed and if you wanted to say that uh, waking up to the possible, it's possible to get rid of your fears, uh, no matter how irrational they may be. And I actually had the manifestation of that right there. And I yelled at Stephen and I said, hey, did you see the snake? And he goes, what snake? And he comes back and he wants to pick the snake up and play with it. And I said, don't stress this snake out. I made a deal with the snake before I met the snake and we're not gonna mess with it. And then I just watched it as it lifted its head and moved across this little path and it was beautiful to watch the motion of the spine of the snake just move you know, languidly, it wasn't in a hurry, and I just went, wow, that's amazing, it's beautiful. And anything is possible, if I can get over that fear, and I'm not saying run up to a rattlesnake and start making friends with it, I'm not talking about that, but the irrational fear that I had, I dropped, and I felt so good about that. So. And so it is. There you go. So good. Yeah. Beautiful.